Don't forget, we're going over to Gary and Bill's tonight for drinks. I don't know what we're expected to bring, but we'll bring something. Uh, oh, how about you go and whip us up a batch of those mini quiches you made for the garden party? Yeah, the ones with the um, individual ones with the Hormel ham in them, you know? <laughs> okay? I love you. <laughs> Mama said my honey and I were gonna have to leave Anatola Parish. Ain't no way you boys are going to be able to live here like that. Ow, ow. Boys, that just ain't going to fly here. And she would take another drag off of her unfiltered Chesterfield. And I would say, Mama, when you are dead of lung cancer, who am I going to have to hang out with? And she would say, Son, you have a point there. <laughs> Mama died last May, and uh, the doctor said it was from emphysema, but we believe that it was just plain meanness that brought about her end. <laughs> we buried her with a couple of cartons of Chesterfields <laughs> and a lighter so that she would be set. <laughs> In case she decided to rise again. <laughs> Which, if you know my mama, is entirely like. <laughs> of course, it's been, um, it's been awful quiet in the house since then. But, well, then, uh, my honey moved in, and, well, we are just two pretty birds sitting on the prettiest branch. I will tell you, not a problem here in town. Mama never did give people enough Credit, honey, don't forget to wear the D&G loafers that Bill likes so much. The ones with the heel. Oh, I just love watching him turn green with envy when you walk in wearing those. All right, let's be a good 30 minutes late, okay? Well, don't take no more than 10 minutes to get there, so. Oh, no, you just shut your mouth, sexy man. It, honey, we have company. Don't go being crude, okay? Oh, you bitch. He can be such a bitch. <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 oh. Did I ever tell you about the time Miss Diana Ross herself came through town? Well, I knew her. Now, you may be sitting back asking yourself, what in the hell was Miss Diana Ross, or Miss Ross as we refer to her, doing here in Anatola Parish? Well, I will tell you. She said she was just passing through, meeting some friends of her daughters. But if you ask me, she was laying low from the law. <laughs> she had a little bit of a drug thing back then, if you may well recall. And I think she just had to get the hell out of Los Angeles and lay low for a bit. And what better place to lay low than right here in Anatola Parish? Only thing that come through here are some drunk chickens and a few lost souls. <laughs> so anyway, I have no more than 15 at the time, and I seen her, Miss Ross, that is, just standing there, right in the middle of an aisle at the Walmart, picking up Hostess Cupcakes and Little Debbie, and wearing her sunglasses, you know? You know how people, when they're coming off of the chemicals, they need a lot of sugar as a substitute for, you know, the bad stuff? So anyway, I just strode right up on to her, and I said, I am Roger Wilkins, and I am your biggest fan. I told her how I had every kind of recording she ever made. I told her that I knew every dance move to every supreme song ever. Baby love, my baby love, I need you, oh how I need you. See? I told her that on behalf of all of Anatola Parish, we were just so pleased to have you in our little town and that if she needed anything, anything at all while she was here, she was to call on me. Well, Miss Ross liked that. And would you believe it, she did! <laughs> For an entire week, I hung out with her at this little house she rented down along by the waterworks, um, by the river, just this, uh, little itty bitty thing of a house that looked like it had been blown up in the French Indian War. <laughs> How she came to stay there, I will never know. But so, um, 
she took a liking to me and I would cook for her and we would gossip about my favorite celebrity and what they were really like and uh, what Hollywood was really like and uh, and then I told Miss Ross about my secret crush which I could just not confide in anyone else I told Miss Ross how I knew how I could feel deep down in my heart of hearts that Mr. Billy D. Williams and I were destined to be together. <laughs> she stared at me for a long minute. But you know what? I think she thought it was cute. And for good God's sake, I thought for a minute she was going to pick up the phone and call him. So anyway, um, about a week went by, and I finally I mustered up the courage. I said to her, I said, Miss Ross, Miss Ross, I said, mm, I just want to be a star. It is all I think about morning, noon, and night. I just know I could be the best star. So won't you please take me with you when you go back to Hollywood. Please, I just need to get out of here. So please, put me in your magic Winnebago and take me home with you. I will cook for you. I will clean for you. I will paint your toenails that lavender color you like so much. I will do whatever I have to until I'm a great star just like you. And she kissed me on the forehead, right here. I liked to never wash my head again. And that night, I went back to Mama's, and under the cover of darkness, and through some pretty thick smoke, I might add, I packed my bag. I knew this was it. I was on the high dive, about to plunge into uncharted waters. I was going to get out. And Miss Ross and I, we was going to be best friends for life. So the next morning, I got up early, and I walked to that dilapidated house that she was renting as fast as my little feet could carry me. I just strode through Anatola Parish as double time. That little broke down shack turned into a palace when she moved in there. I mean, she just brought magic with her wherever she went. So, um, so I, I turned left at Driscoll's Drugstore and uh, I picked up my pace and I strode through those woods knowing this was the last time I was ever going to be there. And uh, I, the water was coming up and I kept on walking knowing that my feet were about to lift up and when they touched down, they were going to be in the land of sunshine and, and palm trees and great movie stars like me. I was climbing up that ladder to that high dive. She was gone. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I mean, her bus just up and left. And uh, there was no trace of her. Just this scar. Oh, I have it. Hold on. Let me show you. Hold on. I've got it here. Oh, pretty, isn't it? It's just this shiny little Hermes scarf she left behind for me. You could say she forgot it, whatever. <laughs> I like to think she uh, left behind some sparkly piece of glamour for me and only me. I, I wrote to her. Uh, I did try to contact her, but uh, I never heard from Miss Ross again. She went back to being Miss Diana Ross. And I had to climb down that ladder from the high dive, and well, here I sit. Not a star. Not even, well, not a star. <laughs> Honey, um, honey, do you remember when I showed you uh, Lady Sings the Blues? You know that picture where she starred as a singer who shot up? Well, I knew her. Do you hear me? I said, I knew her. Honey, are you there? I said, are you there? All right, you're not there. 
You never were. You were right, Mama. <laughs>